Hey, what's up? What's up? It's Two Focus KJ back with another vlog for real. About to start the week off right. About to run up all these miles. But before we do that, we got to get this right steer tire looked at. It's leaking air right from behind the valve core. You know, the little thing right in the center of the valve stem itself. Um, so it's leaking air. I noticed it once I was checking my, my steer tires. And um, yeah, we gotta get that looked at. You know, one little power hole, one curb, one bump of anything could cause all the air to explode. You know, either right through the valve, uh, the valve stem itself, or just had the, you know, from from the impact, just cause the whole tire just to blow up. And we don't need no them type of problems. So um, yeah, before we before we uh, start with this pickup. And delivery or anything, you gotta get that taken care of. So I'm gonna um, take y'all with me in the shop. With a valve core, still inside of the stem, and it's leaking air. This is what you don't want. We on our way to the repair shop right now. All right, we here at the Goodyear Tire Shop. Get the repair. Yeah, taken care of. Yeah, you can notice a little bit of leak in here at the hub as well. Um, but to be honest, they all they all leak a little bit. <laughs> I know they say to always be concerned or you know uh, make sure to report this, but truth is these things right here they always leak slightly, especially if you got an older truck. So as long as it ain't obsessive, you ain't gotta worry about that. So it turns out it just was a broken valve core within the stem. Um, yeah, he just needed to replace the, the valve core and that was that was about it. Then the new stem didn't need nothing. Feel me? New valve core, right? Yep. New valve core. Feel me? That's all I needed. So we about to get rolling, about to get back on the road. And yeah. I'll catch y'all then. Alright, so we made it. We here at the shipper. Just got um, directions from the guard shack to park it in this particular spot, uh, which was the worst directions. This, the directions look nothing like what I had to see with my own eyes, but whatever, I, we, we found it. You know, I got eyes, I can see, I can see numbers, of course. So, um, so we're in a particular spot. Note that um, some shippers do want your um, trailers in a specific, you know, spot, a specific, um, you know, numbered spot. You know to park it in and then um some just say park it in uh any empty spot that you see in a given empty area you know so but it'll usually be within uh the same zone of course so um yeah about to go outside um and drop this trailer
okay now that we dropped our empty trailer now we're on our way to the shipping office to provide them with a bol and a pickup number for our new loaded trailer going to buffalo new york Okay, now we got our new loaded trailer number and the location number spot. So now we go pick up our loaded trailer and we head to uh, Buffalo, New York. Now it's time to log in the trailer information, the new loaded trailer information, and they're gonna always want the numbers. Eight zero nine. We dropping off the trailer. We're gonna know because we already did our drop. This now is a pickup, and we're gonna ask for the seal, which is usually on the paperwork as well. Yep, yes it is. One eight two. No, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. All my senior truckers already know what's going on. See the yellow tape? Mean they either ran out of fuel or there's something wrong with... I'm done for. No one. You said what? It done for. No one. That computer's problem and I think it will be like maybe tomorrow, maybe later. So now I gotta call my company and find out. I'm fucking going on sleeper. Right. I have an appointment on tomorrow morning, I thought that okay. Right, and I, I thought I was ahead. You know, I thought I was ahead of schedule, you know? So this sucks. I thought I was ahead of schedule and now, now I gotta be sent back. I was trying to get five loads this week. I will sleep Yeah, thanks man. Yup. Just like, just like my guy that just, you know, went up to the side of the truck. 
yeah there ain't no fuel available until tomorrow morning all right guys so good news regardless of what's going on at this fuel station the pilot that i'm at I called dispatch and they made me aware that I still have enough fuel, of course, to be able to make successfully make my delivery um, by the night, actually. So we still on schedule. We still ahead of time. You know, that's good news. And following after that delivery being made tonight, I'll get a new fuel station to be able to stop at to fuel up and, you know, keep these keep these loads rolling. So happy about that yeah so about to head out now and um get back started on this road um we will make it to buffalo new york in about five hours and i got seven hours on my clock so we good to go yeah rise and grind everybody just waking up from my 10 hour dot break not too long ago so last night, a couple hours from leaving the pilot that had no fuel, nothing whatsoever, I run into a winter storm. Just getting into New York. And during the time, there were no saw trucks to be seen or found. And the snow was starting to snick, stick on the ground. So, this is a really hilly area. Curvy upgrades, curvy downgrades. A lot of what you don't want to see <laughs> when it, especially when the snow start to come down and start to stick. So for me, that was an automatic. It's time to take your take your ten hour uh, DOT break <laughs> for sure. I don't care if I got five hours left on my clock and just just press to run it down gotta adjust for specific conditions you know and, and be aware of the conditions that you in but we still in good timing we still going to deliver ahead of time so cost benefit analysis says we good to go see y'all in a few So we had the new fuel station to fuel up that. Right, so we arrived but they wanted us to park in these spaces right here 
along these spaces and walk our paperwork to the guard shack office. I guess for them to verify whatever they need to verify. So, you know, it's always different at um, different places that you go to deliver or receive. So yeah, gotta see what they talking about in a, in a moment. Okay, so okay. So at 7 p.m., people start lining up in the right lane. You're gonna get in line. Make sure you have your safety vest on. Your door will be 142. After you back in, you're gonna take your paperwork to 131. 131 the spot or it's the office. Office. Office 131. Okay. It says receiving. All right. Um, so right at seven o'clock. Well, seven. You'll start. You'll start. You'll see people start lining up. Just get in line if you can. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yep. Have a good day. You too. Thanks for the help. No problem. So look, like I gotta take back what I said about being ahead of schedule. I won't be able to deliver. We'll start delivering until 7 p.m. tonight. And delivery time was scheduled at 8 p.m. So, but it is what it is. It happens in trucking sometimes. Happens in trucking. But we still on time. So at this point, all I could do is get up and sleep and get me some extra rest, some extra sleep. You know, so I can stay on point on the road. You know, and I'm gonna get at y'all later. All right, so we just got done back and then to the designated spot. About to go right into the receiving's office to check in. Let them know we're here. And give them any other information that they need. So we all checked in at the receiving's office. Now we back at the truck just waiting to get loaded at any moment now. With this particular load, I did have to pay for a lumpers fee of $210. All getting reimbursed by the company. This was just the first time I had to do it. Didn't even know lumper fees were that high. But hey, whatever. We talking about the trucking game, right? Okay, so what I want to add regarding the lumpers fee, the receiver's office will send you a link either to your email or write to your test messages. From there, you'll click the link, enter some basic information that you already gave them at the receiver's office, right through the link. And from there, you will usually submit an advanced authorization form or however your you know, right through the tablet, or however how your company asks you um, to reach out to them regarding paying the lumpers fee, because they usually always take care of that. From there, they will send you a money code that you input 
right through the link that the receiver sent you. Once that is paid for, the receivers will, well, the receivers at that they use, usually which is a third party company, they will ask you if you want a receipt to your test messages or either straight to your email. Email is always the best option. But this is the most important thing that I want to put emphasis on. Always make sure you get a receipt. Or there's no way that the advance that you ask from for the, for the company, that's, that's pulled right out of your paycheck. So basically, your paycheck is not getting reimbursed for the lumpus fee if you do not have the receipt. Always make sure you get the receipt. I'm going to repeat again. Always make sure you get a receipt. Or there'd be no way to make sure that you get that fee reimbursed to your paycheck. All right, so we all wrapped up. Just got my signed bill of lading back and receipt. So we all wrapped up. We all good to go. Successful delivery. Appreciate everybody tuning in with me. Like, subscribe, and share on the channel. And I'm going to get at y'all next time.